hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide and we are on October 24th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well as a look at earthquakes and volcanoes and of course world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours on our sun, 304 angstroms, a few minor C-class solar flares to talk about can see those little flashes there right hand side and as well cresting incoming checking out the last few images here cresting this is getting ready to turn in we do have more coronal holes building in the northern hemisphere and as well a couple active regions there right hand side bright regions looking at the most recent and largest flares in an outgoing direction creating cmes and as well we have that large coronal hole in the southern hemisphere getting ready to turn away as it has already increased our solar winds. Another closer look here at the incoming sunspot regions. We've had a few flares on the back side of the sun, so these are pretty active regions. Plasma filaments dancing around the northwest there. Having a look at multi-spectrum. Two pretty fantastical events there, southeast and northwest. And that large plasma tornado in the southern hemisphere still spinning around. And another look here, 193 angstroms, and this shows the darkened coronal holes. So those black regions are coronal holes, which is a cooled region on the surface of our sun. Pretty large one right there, turning away. And a couple more building right there. Having a look at the solar x-ray flux as it remains in B range right now, after shooting off four C-class flares overnight, solar proton flux is low, geomagnetic activity sitting at KP1 after being bumped up to KP5 pretty much as soon as that coronal hole wind stream was hitting Earth. Solar winds were sitting at about 450 kilometers per second after being jacked up to about 574 during the space weather event from the coronal hole. And you can see the telemetry here where everything changed as that came in. Looking at ISWA space prediction spiral, showing the most, or yesterday's solar flare creating a CME in an outgoing position towards Mercury and then another one just there, smaller one today. Other than that, no space weather events thwarted our way, only dealing with the coronal holes. Schumann resonance for today is a power of 5. After being up very high yesterday, it was at 54. Quick look at telemetry here. Quality of 6.8, amplitude of 5, power of 5. Now let's get to earthquakes here. The past 24 hours, it's been semi-busy. Kind of average right now. We're sitting about 230 earthquakes across the USGS map. We're going to start out here with the largest reported today. 5.6 High High Fo Tonga. As well, a couple pretty deep earthquakes. 4.7 there. 4.3, 552 kilometer depth. That's our deepest the past 24 hours. 5.1 here to report. Solomon Islands, Kira Kira. As well, a 5.3, sizable there. Pagan region, Northern Mariana Islands, Marianas Trench. 5.4 here in Guin, Philippines. Seeing lots of activity through the region today, as well into Indonesia, Kerinci Volcano. 4.7 there, Kashima, Japan. As far north as Mutsu, Japan as well. And Kushiro, Russia. 4.1 there in Dolinsk, Russia, 448 kilometer depth, and a 4.3 there, Tilichiki, Russia. 4.3 here reported in China. And this is only the 24 hour period, as well as 4.2 Turkmenistan. Quick look over South America, minor activity in the south there, Oval, Chile, 44 kilometer depth, 4.0. 
as well as 5.0 here in Palo Peru, and Panama still seeing some earthquakes. 4.6 there reported today. And a little bit concerning Mona Passage. We've seen quite a few earthquakes through the region there. Across the North American plate, largest last 24 hours, Fortuna, California, 4.1. As well seen the geysers there. But no major swarms to talk about. And no notable earthquakes except for earthquakes atop, yet again, Mount St. Helens, Rainier, and Ashasta. But as I said, very minor earthquakes. Minor earthquakes north of Yellowstone as well. And then our regular earthquakes all around California. Quick look here at Canada for earthquakes. And this is last seven days for earthquakes. All of the orange ones are the most recent in the last 48 hours. Lots of activity up Juan de Fuca, right up into Prince Rupert, British Columbia, Port McNeil, along the Queen Charlotte Sound, Port Hardy, and as well Alberta, north of Banff, northwest of Edmonton, up into Fort St. John. Just wanted to give you a quick look at Canada as it is shaking, if not just as much as the United States especially way up north. Alaska seeing a lot of increased activity as well. Hawaii, largest through the region, was a 3.3. few of those earthquakes were atop Mauna Loa, but nothing to be of concern about. But there is a slight earthquake watch, as we did see a few deep earthquakes here in the past 48 hours. We have not really seen the large residual earthquake to follow. Quick look at the last seven days for earthquakes across the world. Largest being the 6.8 there in Panama. Quick look over the Northern Hemisphere, North Pole, and of course the South Pole. And look at all that antipodal action South America, Mid-Central America, right on the opposite side of the planet is the Philippines and Indonesia. Let's have a look at most recent satellite imagery and as well, most recent volcanoes getting updated today. Checking out Sangay in Ecuador, as well as Sabancaya in Peru, Swiss and Ajima, Japan, Reventador in Ecuador, Fuego, Guatemala, about 180, almost 180 active alerts here. And a lot of them, again, are flooding. Looking at Bezi Miani in Russia. So now we are sitting at 53, if not 54, active and erupting volcanoes across the planet. Kerinci has awakened six days ago. Indonesia. As well, Popopoketito. Semeru, Indonesia, Alade, Russia, that is another new volcano, Era in Japan, Krakatoa, Indonesia. So stay tuned for the volcanic activity report as it will be coming up soon, giving you another update on all of the active and erupting volcanoes across the planet. Having a look here at Pacific Disaster Center showing the last 48 hours of satellite imagery across the world. Big system heading into Spain has brought quite a bit of moisture. Daily evaporation rains through South America, but very dry in the South, South America. Two tropical storms to talk about, remnants of Roslyn, that low pressure center heading into the Gulf. Pretty big rain systems developing across the Pacific, getting ready for the West Coast. Australia, Eastern Australia is still dealing with a lot of rain. Tropical cyclone Citrang is alive and grinding up into Myanmar as we speak as a Category 2 hurricane or cyclone. And then just look at the rest of the world. Many, many flood alerts. Stay tuned to Daily Do. We'll be giving you updates daily. Now let's have a look at world weather. Starting out here overlooking North America. Very big system right now over Manitoba. 
and northern Ontario bringing snow and rain as well. West Coast seeing some moisture coming in as, as well over the next few days. And watch for a big system here to grind out of the Atlantic Ocean right up the East Coast. Colorado low here. Heading in for Wednesday, Thursday, bringing spotty showers and as well a cold front behind that. Not too many warm days left. Lots of moisture moving up into the Atlantic provinces. Lots of moisture coming in Thursday, Friday, all along the West Coast. You've got an atmospheric river on your doorstep. And it is going to continue over the next few days. So some relief to the drought-stricken areas. And as I said, moisture could reek down as far south as California. But other than that, we've got another low developing in Colorado here for next week. Bringing snow as far south as Colorado. Cold temperatures coming in behind. Watch for even middle United States to see some snow as these systems move eastward. We've also got a tropical cyclone here. Hurricane coming through the Atlantic, developing through the Caribbean next weekend, Friday into Saturday, and it looks like it'll be into the Gulf by Sunday, Monday. Stay tuned, stay aware and prepared, as we will be giving you daily forecast models. Other than that, no major systems here in the Atlantic are developing. It's been an interesting end to our hurricane season, and it's still not over. We've still got a couple, if not three weeks left. Overlooking South America, heavy rains, Argentina and southern Chile. Daily evaporation rains through most of northern South America. Overlooking Africa, got some moisture hanging around South Africa for the next little bit. Cold front moving in, could see some stormy conditions along the coastlines. Overlooking Europe. No major systems penetrating just yet. They're all still just spinning off the coast there in the North Atlantic. No major systems coming your way this week. Overlooking Russia, quite a big snowstorm developing. We've also got Sai Trang, who is heading up into Myanmar right now. Going to bring heavy rains, of course, and flash flooding and snow to parts of Tibet. We've also got another cyclone here developing Saturday into Sunday, 29th to 30th for northern Philippines. And then watch as that heads out into the West Pacific. Overlooking Australia, you've got rain that will be moving out here by Wednesday, Thursday, drying out a little bit. And then watch through central parts as you've got another low grinding in there for eastern Australia into the long range. New Zealand, a bunch of days of rain and as well parts of Northern Australia. I wanna thank you all for watching today. If you enjoyed the, enjoyed the video, please don't forget to smash that like button and maybe share with your friends and family. I really appreciate you watching today. Much love, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun and get your daily due. We'll see you next video, bye-bye. today's video please hit that like button subscribe share with your friends and family from across the world